What up, family? It's your boy Amaru back with another review, and this time I am reviewing down. Yo, I got this one. You got what? Bruh, come on, man. Yo, it's Rue. Down Abbey? I got this, fam. I've been waiting for this one. Let's go. What up, folks? It's Rue. I'm back. I'm, I'm ready for this one. I got it because Down Abbey is my sh. You sure you got this? Do you even like Down Abbey? Do I like it? Do you forget what we did on Hollywood Game Night? It's a character from Downton Abbey. Oh, no, I don't, I won't. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Sir Bob Abui. <laughs> Lady Godiva. Mr. Carson. <gasps> oh my gosh! I'm a Roo! Mr. Carson. Yes, oh Jamar! Besides, I'm like Happy Hogan, bruh. Sunday night's PBS, Downton Abbey. That's a show he thinks it's elegant. What you know about elegance? I can be elegant. You elegant? Yeah. Really? See? Elegant. Parades were worn in France, not England. I had to improvise. Anyway, for six seasons, we fell in love with the Crowleys, a early 20th century British aristocratic family who lived upstairs and the downstairs cooks, maids, footmen, and butlers who served them on the day-to-day. -day. This movie is a continuation uh, from the end of the show, set two years after, and it is just season seven in two hours, and I loved every second of it. Now, I didn't heard all you critics talk about how this show doesn't really say anything of importance. Are we doing this now? Yep. But can't we just enjoy a show for what it is? No, it doesn't really go too in depth into British oligarchy or colonialism or the moralities of servitude, but you know what it does when it does skim the surface of these topics? It focuses on what is at the core of everything. Humanity. Get em. Love. Get em. Honor. Get em. Integrity. Get em. Identity and choice. Get em. Oh, green Jimmy the cricket suit wearing ass mom. By focusing on how the upstairs and downstairs dealt with royal dinners and galas and marriages and keeping scandals out of the paper, it was able to delve deep into topics like homosexuality and what love really is and the perils of war and it made you care about every single one of the 50 million characters that came in and out of this show. And the movie just continued from there and it was everything. Show creator and screenwriter Julian Fellows was able to take a season's worth of storylines and conflicts and character arcs and cram it into a two-hour movie while still making every story feel complete and every character feel needed. Now, everything in the movie revolves around Downton Abbey getting prepared for a royal visit from the King and Queen of England. From there, we are presented with a bunch of incidents that the characters have to deal with from an upcoming pregnancy, an upcoming wedding, an inheritor's battle, and the downstairs crew having to stave off a royal takeover of their duties. Now those of us Abbey fans will get a little bit more out of this movie because they give us a lot of fan service, since we know 52 episodes worth of history of the intertwining lives of these characters. Like how the Crawleys, especially Michelle Dockery's Mary, can't seem to stay off the back of former chauffeur slash Irish revolutionary slash now son-in-law of the Crawleys, Tom, played by Island Leach, because they think he might slip back into his revolutionary ways and ruin the world visit. I mean, hasn't this man been through enough? All the stuff he went through to prove to, you know what? I know the history, I know what's going on, but for those of you who don't, the plot is presented to you in such a way that the characters wrap you around their fingers just like they did on the show. And you will be so invested so quickly. I mean, I don't think I've ever been this worried about a dinner in a movie ever. 
and laugh my ass off the entire way through. It's the performances that will make you fall in love again or fall in love for the first time with everything that's going on in Downton. And it's such a feat because there's so many of them. Hugh Bonneville and Elizabeth McGovern are back as the patriarch and matriarch of the Crawleys. Is there a way to put those words together? Lord and Lady Grantham, Phyllis Logan and Jim Carter are back as the head butler and housekeeper of the downstairs crew, Mr. Carson and Mrs. Hughes. And then, of course, we got Mr. and Mrs. Bates, played by Joanne Froggett and Brendan Coyle, who, I mean, who doesn't love them? But truthfully, you fall in love with all of them. But not like you do with the two standouts, just like they were in the show. Kevin Doyle as Mr. Mosley is hilarious. I fell out on the floor in the theater how good this man was. You laugh, you cry, you just, you feel for the guy. And he plays it to a T. But not like Dame Maggie Minerva McGonagall Smith. She is the Dowager Countess, Grandmother Violet, Master of the Cutting Word, Mother of the Soul Crushing Quip, and worth the price of admission alone. Not only do we get her sharp tongue going up against her equally fabulous sparring partner, Lady Isabel, played by the also underrated Penelope Wilson, but we are gifted Umbridge, Minerva, McGonagall, Dolores, two. That inheritance battle I was talking about between Dame Maggie Smith and newcomer in the movie, Isabel Staunton and my geek heart just exploded. I don't know what else to tell you, man. This movie, it's a reason to binge watch the show because it was so good. It was elegant. Loved it. This is my review. Man, my head is sweaty. Why is that? Elegant. Maybe because your hat didn't magically move on your head? That makes sense. It's a nine out of 10. It was beautiful. Filled my heart up with adorableness and charm. I loved it. His his written reviews in the link below. Subscribe, like, comment, share, subscribe. Go watch the show. Go watch the movie. Become an Abby fan because it's it's lovely. See y'all. How how you do it? Pe peace. Throwing up gang signs and stuff. What you doing, man? <laughs>